everybody. You see, I have to start by greeting because I'm from Limpopo. And in Limpopo, if you don't greet, you don't get any response. I remember this one time, I was texting, I'm getting off after the robot. Hey, the guy kept on driving. After robot, he drove and drove until I said, hello, anybody home? Can I get off? And then he said, yeah, Dumela Wanya, now we're a guy. You should have greeted first. Maduma is serious in Limpopo. Even if you meet me in the streets, before you ask for a selfie, say hello first, eh? Recognize. So, help me to say hello to Mr. Chabin himself, Jason Goliath. Yay! Corona. Hi, I'm Jason Goliath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm gonna make sure that you leave here, even if you don't laugh, I'm gonna make sure that you leave here with life lessons, because I know you need life lessons. Why? Because we've just been through the most difficult time that humanity's been through in easily the last hundred years. It was 1918 when that Spanish flu came. Then the flu came back with the Italian accent and we were not ready, guys. We were not ready. Corona has put us in places, the lockdown. So people have asked me, Jason, you're a positive person. We know that chubby guys are normally happy guys, but tell us the secret. How do you do this? How do you stay so positive? How do you stay so upbeat? So here it is. I'm gonna give you Jason Goliath's three rules to surviving a pandemic. Rule number one, exist in a space of gratitude. Do you know what that means? It means you've got to accept your situation. Whatever your situation is, you can't dwell and waste energy about that thing every single day. If you wake up going, oh no, again, I've got to do all these things. Masks, physical distancing. I've got to drink sanitizer. Mm. I mean, I've got to use sanitizer. I've got to use sanitizer. You're going to stay in that space of stress. My advice is exist solely in a space of gratitude. So what I did is I accepted that this is the way the world is and there is nothing I can do to change it. And once you've accepted that, you don't waste any more energy on that. All of your energy is now being wasted on what you are grateful for. I'll give you an example. My gratitude comes from simple things. Just being alive. If you are watching this right now and you are not dead, you should be grateful. And I want you to think about that for a second. It may make you uncomfortable to think about it, but people died around the world and you are alive and you are still complaining. Shut up with your life. You are fine. Be grateful. If you can't find gratitude in life, maybe you've got to find gratitude in simple things. Are you still employed? Me, I'd be laminating my pace slip, eh? If I was still employed, I will laminate my pay slip, I'll make copies, I'll stick one behind the bathroom door, so that's the first thing I see in the morning to say, okay, table orders are still fine, okay, okay. Put one in the fridge just to remind yourself, don't eat too much, you don't earn that much. But you gotta put one everywhere and remind yourself to be grateful. Like my wife gets annoyed with me because now I'm suddenly grateful for everything. Like we pull out of our complex, we turn onto the street and I'm like, baby, I'm so grateful for this road. And she's like, what do you mean you're so grateful for this road? And I'm like, baby, look at my body. I can't build a road. I'm not designed for road building. This body and a spade and a shovel and a pick, I'm not designed for those things. When I perspire, it's because I've actually walked from the kitchen back to the lounge. I'm not your guy. If you're like gonna drop me on a deserted island where there's only bush and give me a machete and go find your route. No, I'm staying on the beach. I'm the guy that arrives after the machete bra, after the bra that came after the machete bra to make the dirt road. Then there's another bra that comes with that truck. Beep, beep, beep. They drop the tar, then I come, drive over all their hard work and get paid. Deb. Rule number two. This one is a tricky one, guys, because essentially what you have to realize is this. Survival will go down in the column of profit. If you survive, that's all you need to do. Just survive. Abandon your hopes and dreams. Forget about all the things. Because I know, you were just like me. First of January 2020, we were all, we got caught up. Because 2019 was cuck, eh? 2019, yeah, your debit orders were bouncing, eh? 2019, it was rough. It was rough. You never answered one private number the whole of 2019. <laughs> then we thought 2020 is here. People were hashtag 2020. Hashtag the year of my dreams. Forget about every hope and dream you had, okay? You must just survive. If you survive, it will go down as profit. You've got to embody and embrace and, and hold on to the spirit of bear girls. Hey, and, that, and when I say that, you've got to wake up with bear girls every single morning and use bear girls through the day. I know a lot of you don't do that, WWJD, but now it's WW bear girls. What would bear girls do? Oh, I could go for a cup of urine. So when you are thinking of, uh, should I order Uber Eats? Mm, that's gonna be nice. No, what would bear girls do? Bear girls will eat a warm testicle like an apple, guys. Bear girls will pick a warm testicle from any animal. He doesn't even care. You guys have watched that Van Wilder movie. You know when those things are, those dingleberries are tingling there. 
Bear Grylls will pick that thing off an animal. He'll look directly into the camera and he'll bite into that thing. You know a warm juice will squirt, eh? Bear Grylls doesn't even flinch as that warm juice is squirting out. He'll tell you, oh, it's delicious. It's delicious. It's delicious. I don't know why. Testicles always look to me like they taste like, 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 like Bovril wrapped in cabbage. I don't know why, where that comes from, but I hope that that visual sticks with you. You've got to survive. If you survive, you are going to thrive. So forget about that dream of learning French. Parlez-vous, parlez You don't need it this year. You're not going to France. Are you going to France? You. No, you are not. You want to do, oh, I'm going to do gardening because I've got green fingers. No, your fingers must be green from counting money. Let the plants die. The plants will grow again in 2021. We are just surviving because if you survive, you are going to thrive. Dab one more time. It's a simple thing. Now, most importantly, and this one is a little bit difficult. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, it's a little bit technical. You gotta keep it moving. You gotta keep it moving. And when I say you gotta keep it moving, I mean, I want you to think about this pandemic as like the hotbed of coal. You know that hotbed of coal? We'll see every, those motivational speakers, they're always bald, they've always got makeup on, even when they're not on camera, you see that Brian Spa, he looks like he's got powder on. You know what I mean? You know those motivational speakers, they always say, when you run over the hotbed of coals, you've got to keep it moving. If you stop, you burn. If you don't, you are going to be fine. The problem with keeping it moving is you've got to motivate yourself beyond your mood. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Your mood is what impacts your creativity. Your mood is what impacts your productivity. Your mood will determine whether you dala or you don't dala. And if you don't dala, you're going to get dala. And nobody wants to dala you if you're not dalarable. So dala what you must so that you don't get dala. Think about it like, okay, don't be a garage pie. Because a garage pie is where we were in 2019, where things were a little bit rough, we were a little bit in the struggle, but a garage pie, for me, is the diva of the garage delicacies. Because why? It stays in a glass window. It's got the, it's got the heater on because it hates the cold. You know, to grab that pie, you've got to grab tongs and a bag, and you've got to put that pie in. You have choices. Do you want a pepper steak? Do you want Cornish pasty? Cornish pasty is for psychopaths. If you eat Cornish pasty, you must start asking questions about your life, you. But the, what you need to be is not the pie. Be the Chelsea pan. And not, 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 I'm not talking about these name brand Chelsea pans. I'm talking about that Chelsea pan at a one off garage. You're on your way to the middle of the Northern Cape and you stop at a garage and there's a Chelsea pan. Where do they put that Chelsea pan? At the till. That thing is so big, you don't know. Is it made by Sasco? Why does it look like a loaf? That thing has only got three raisins on the outside. You don't know if that white syrup even has sugar in, but there's something about the way they glaze that Chelsea pan that even if it's been there for three weeks, it still looks cute and delicious. It still looks supple and nice. That Chelsea pie knows it doesn't get the respect of a garage shop pie but it will fill you up for two to three days because you sometimes have to eat that thing like a rusk. You've got to dip it. You've got to dip that bastard. You've got to wait for the things to soak in. So for me, you've got to be the Chelsea pan. I'm always that guy that stops at the till. Confident. No, I'm just, just need cigarettes. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Yes, yes, please. No, no, we can afford them again. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Cyril. And that fuck, I mean, Mamzuma, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> thank, thank you very much for these for these cigarettes. And then then the, then the Chelsea pan just looks at you, and then I look at the Chelsea pan, and the Chelsea pan looks back at me, and then I look at the Chelsea pan, and I'm trying. I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm married now. I'm responsible. I'm a married man. And then the Chelsea pan is just like, are we? <laughs> Be the Chelsea pan, guys. Be the thing that you would never have, because if you survive, you are going to thrive. If you keep it moving, you are going to be fine. Stay up, stay positive. Number one, live in a space of gratitude. Number two, survive, 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 and forget about your hopes and dreams. And number three, keep it moving. Because if you survive, you're going to thrive. I'm Jason Goliath. I'm so sweaty. Oh, yes, that was Jason Goliath. And hey, I hear that women apparently don't want six packs anymore. They want chubby men because the bigger the packs, the smaller the package. I don't know about that, but I know that there's a not so chubby n who's itching to be seen on my screen. Are you wasting your life doing stupid favors for people? Are you in financial ruin from being a pushover? Hi, are you a spineless worm of a person? Are people constantly bothering you with their useless nonsense? Do you have trouble saying no, nyek, never, I'm phony, footsack, or as the Russians said, khambos nyek? Introducing the no man. Hey, mom. Yeah, yes. 
How, how much do you need? Hey, Ma. Yeah, no. The No Man is manufactured by the best scientists from the University of Bronco Spring, using polymers from the stingiest South Africans. 20% Twana, 3% Petty Metrocop, and the rest, a generic white guy, giving you the perfect solid no every time. The No Man can even save you from yourself. your peace and enjoy a hassle-free existence thanks to the nomad. For your very own nomad, call the number on screen now. Call. What are you going to say? No? You don't have a nomad yet. Call. Call. What does the next headliner's Jay-Z collection and jokes have in common? They've both been used by someone else. Ladies and gentlemen, Skulk, Bezade and Hold. Hello, hi everyone. Laka, thank you for coming to this virtual thing that we are doing. Mensa, I know lockdown was rough. Personally, for me, you know, um, I did actually prefer the fact that the borders were closed, that we couldn't travel. Means that travel is cock expensive. And as a South African, now you think you're doing well. You think you're doing well. You look at your bank statements at the end of the year and you're like, Blixab, I'm doing well. But you forget, you are doing well in rands. There's a Musa difference. Like even the cheaper countries where it's, there's not the fucking euro, even those countries can get expensive. I remember my fiance and I, we went to the Philippines. Now, this is the thing when South Africans, when we go overseas, now, we get arrogant. And that's why I always tell people, don't worry, because you want to tell people, listen, when you go overseas as a South African, just stay humble. But you don't have to worry, Mensa, because South Africa will humble you. I mean, I felt very fancy going to the Philippines because here in South Africa, you know, I've got an Afrikaans accent. We get teased a lot for accent. But in the Philippines, I don't have a funny accent at all because they've got like a really thick accent, a really funny accent. Like they don't even have a V or a F sound in their alphabet. It doesn't exist. They replace it with a P. So there, if the time is uh, 4.45, you know, they will say 4.45. It's poor Porty Pipe. So I felt like very confident going to the Philippines. So lacquer, we walk around there. We met this Tani in the Philippines. Now, Filipina Tani, very rich, very wealthy Tani. And when she found out we were from South Africa, she started freaking out, right? She said, you know what? My favorite place in the world is in South Africa. And means that she had been everywhere, now. New York. London, Milan, fucking Australia, okay? She had been everywhere, everywhere in the world, all the lacquer places, but she said, my favorite place I've ever been to in the world is in South Africa. So I asked, oh, where? Expecting her to say Cape Town. That is sort of the most obvious place. She goes, no, Sun City. I kid you not, man. So she says to me, Sun Fucking city is my favorite place I've been to in the whole world. And I know you're sitting there at home thinking, ah, that's ridiculous, that's funny. Yeah, well, guess what? It actually fucked up my holiday. Because in the whole time, I'm there in the Philippines, one of the most beautiful places on earth, but then I kept comparing it to Sun City. And I felt like I wasted my money. You know why? Because Sun City won every single time. I mean, I'm walking around there on the beach, standing there. It's clear there's fish around, swimming around your feet. It's amazing. But I'm standing there thinking, you know what? It could use some waves though. Sun City has a fucking valley of those things. I mean, we went to a bar one night. There was like one slot machine, you know. I thought to myself, okay, oh, cool. Like Philippines, we can, you can gamble a bit. 
but it doesn't have that Sun City level of gambling. You know, that throw your life away <laughs> level of gambling that Sun City has. So eventually, we meet the Swiss French couple there in the Philippines now. And everyone knows the Swiss French, that is the fanciest of the people. So now at this stage, I'm feeling very arrogant. Now I'm like, here, like I, I am living the dream because we went out to a restaurant. It's like a fancy restaurant, man, sir. And I'm feeling now at this stage very arrogant. Yo, we were these Swiss French people. They knew the chef oui, oui. of the restaurant. There's a long line. We skip past the line. We walk straight inside. I mean, the fanciest place growing up in Kempton Park, now, the fanciest place we went to is fucking Ocean Basket. You didn't just saw me pop into Ocean Basket willy-nilly for a meal. It was for special occasions, birthdays, anniversaries. That's, that's all you went to Ocean Basket for. There were other rules. You didn't just summer order a Fanta grape or a cream soda in Ocean Basket. Are you crazy? There were only two options of a cool drink. Grape tizer or apple tizer. Those were your options. So we go to this fancy place feeling as arrogant as ever, but this is why I say, you don't have to humble yourself because South Africa will humble you. As we're sitting there, I hear from the other side of the restaurant, I hear, well, my fork, skulk, Poseidon out. The Swiss French couple, they're like, uh, Skulk, I, I think he's uh, uh, calling you. I was like, he's a crazy person, just ignore him, okay? They're like, but he uh, knows your name. He is standing there still. Skulk! Skulk! Poseidon out. Where my fork? In the fucking Philippine. I can't do it. They're like, Skulk, he knows your name. I was like, I look like a Skulk Poseidon out, okay? I look like, if you look at my face, you will think Skulk Poseidon out. The name suits me so well that I just, I look like a Skulk Poseidon out. This guy goes, Skulk! Skulk! Vare Susan Sapus. Okay, now I know everyone's very confused right now. Susan Sapus is one of my oldest jokes. It's like some of my oldest material. It was like in the first two years of my career. It's basically a joke that was about, you know, how in Afrikaans we say a cut. This is the biggest difference that I didn't realize between Afrikaans and Dutch. Is there they call a cut a poos. That's what it's called, you know. And I was in Holland visiting people there that I knew. I was staying in a hotel, going through the TV channels, and there was like a kiddie show, you know, and you know, like in a typical kiddie show, that guy comes out at the beginning of all kiddie shows, looks a bit like me, has a mustache, looks like a pedophile, and then he comes out and he talks to the children and he's like, Hello, can I show you? Come help me look for Susan Sapoos. Susan Sapoos. Ben it under the tafel. Susan Sapoos. Johan. Johan, where is Susan Sapoos? Poor Johan is standing there. I don't know where Susan Sapoos is. Susan is running around in the background. I get my poos for lore. I get my poos for lore. I'm watching this thinking, how can this be a kiddie show? This should be on the 7 o'clock news. There's a little girl out there that's lost a poos. Fuck, we must get a search team together. Yerlikheid. So now I think to myself, Yerlikheid, I, I am ignoring this guy, but he's one of my true fans. He knows some of my first material, so I feel bad. I get up, I go to him, hey, hey, listen, hey, shut the fuck up. Hi, how are you? He's like, hello. I ask his name, I kid you not, his name is Fricky, who studies in Stellenbosch. I go all the way to the fucking Philippines on the other side of the world just to run in to a fucking fricky. But now, you know, I'm feeling bad that I ignored him, so I'm making a bit of small talk, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you know, how, you, how is it? Yeah, in the Philippines, he says he's a surfer, he's really loving it, that's why I came to this specific island, because there's lacquer waves. He's like, yeah, it's lacquer, and it's like, okay, cool, lacquer. Then he says to me, yeah, but let's be honest, Skulk. It's not Sun City. I was like, where am I? Fork South Africa. Okay, fork that. Lacquer means that my name is Skull Poseidon. Thank you very much. Hey guys, apparently the skinnier the guy, the bigger the who, huh? Maybe that's why Skulk is always wearing baggy jeans, you know? Nah, he's white.
<laughs> anyway, as I said that I'm from Limpopo, and where I come from, we have what we call family clan names. It's like an animal that is used to represent the strength of your family. For example, if they say these are the Chabalalas and their totem is a lion, we all know that the lion is the king of the jungle when he draws all the animals bow. So when someone from the Chabalala clan gets married, old women ululate and say, ria, 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 dawi yashata, meaning a lion is getting married. As the Mosuetas, according to the wisdom of my forefathers, you know, those people sat down under a tree one day and decided that our totem, you know, the animal that is going to represent the strength of our family is a pig. It used to hurt me so much when I was young, visiting my grandmother, meaning a pig is entering. And then one And I remember this one time, I came home very worried and I decided now church is not for me because the pastor was talking about the way to heaven. He was saying that the gate is narrow and the road is very narrower. Not everyone can enter through it. And I thought me with my weight, it means by default guys, I'm going to hell. But I don't have a problem with my weight. I only have a problem with people who have a problem with my weight. Like this guy, he used to say to me during lunch, ah, Nuko, when are you not supposed to eat bread and chips? And I would say, why not? And he says, because you are fat, and when you eat these things, you're gonna be fatter than this. And I would say, but even you, you are ugly, and you're busy making babies. Evan, I give as much as I take. But you know, I just hate it when I walk around town and then, but Papa Miri Ribar Munabar, come, my sister, let me do your hair. I'll buy you pizza. Hevanna, Hanil Tonjo Berkshire de Jorum Bribor Gitlaka Salunia. But anyway, Kimanga Karanang Dijo. Bye.